Don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome to Steampunk Tuesday. I'm stepping in for sitting in for Ian this week um, while he's busy in his garage and I don't often get to say this, building a time machine. Yes, he's building a time machine today. Anyway, <laughs> um, so I said last week, or I mentioned last week, that I would show you how I create um, my steampunk kind of rusty, grungy backgrounds. So what I've done is I've just pulled out a selection of two sets of paint from my collection. So this set of colours are from my Dina Wakely Media uh, paint collection. And this set of paints are from my DecoArt Americana paint collection. Um, but obviously, whatever paint collection you've got, you probably will have similar colours in both or in your collection to what I've got in mine. But bearing in mind, you don't have to use paint. Obviously, whatever is your preferred colouring medium, whether it's paint, ink, spritzers, or, or pens, or whatever, um, watercolours, whatever, as long as you choose the same kind of colour palette, you should be able to achieve a, um, a kind of steampunky, rusty, grungy kind of background. Now the only difference to any of these is with watercolours because obviously, or any heavy water mixed product, is that it probably will dry a bit lighter. Acrylic paints or even oil paints or pastels or whatever tend to hold the colour better than anything with too much water that will probably die back a bit. Now let me just move those sets of paints to one side. Now I did show this motherboard or masterboard that I created a couple of weeks ago um, in one of the vlogs. Um, now again, if you look at this, this was done using my spritzes. So this is just water mixed with some um, Colorcraft Brusho pigment powders to create some water-based spritzes. So that's what I used to create this. Um, but I made sure I went very, very heavy. And obviously there is texture paste in the background as well. So if you look at this, you can see that there are oranges, there are browns, there are greens, and there are some blues. Now the greens are made up of blues and yellows. Obviously when those two mix, they create your greens. There's flashes of red, there's browns in there, there's oranges and yellows as well. So again, we're using a similar colour palette to this. The only difference is you can't really see it, but I've included a grey. So there's the elephant from the Dina Wakeley and the slate grey from the Americana. Um, but there is, or there are, grey tones in there in certain areas just to kind of give you that effect. So as long as you use the, that kind of colour palette, so you're using an earth tone, so warms, so you're using yellows, oranges, ochres, um, browns, terracottas, that kind of colour, coffee, vintage photo, you get the picture. A red, so there's a little bit of red in there, and you need some kind of um, verdigris. So for that verdigris, which is copper oxide, you need some kind of turquoise or some kind of teal. So from the Americana set, I'm hoping this is, isn't going to be too bleached out, um, I've got sea aqua and I've also got teal mint. One is slightly darker than the other, so the teal mint is slightly darker than the sea aqua. And with the Dina Wakely Media one, I've got turquoise. Um, there are others, so you've got um, peacock, which will probably work just as well. Um, so there will be some kind of turquoisey or teal variant in the colours that you're trying to use. If you haven't got one, then you can mix your blue and your green together with some white to make your own. Okay, so that's the basic kind of colour palette that we're going to be using. So browns, oranges, yellows, I've got ochre in this instant, um, and a touch of red. Okay, so that's the one that I made, um, but I'll come back to that later. 
Right, so today I'm going to be creating my background on this piece of watercolour cardstock. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to introduce some texture onto the page. So I'll just bring that back in again, I shouldn't have put it away. So as you can see in this one I did put um, some texture paste through my bamboozle stencil. Um, but you can use whatever stencil you want if you want to put um, texture down in a pattern. For this page that I'm going to be creating today I'm not going to be using a stencil, I'm not going to be using a pattern. I'm just going to be creating some texture using structure paste from Imagination Crafts which is a, a UK based company um, but any texture or structure paste will do and if you don't have any structure paste or texture paste um, then you can buy um, I think it's in the U in the US it's called spackle here in the UK we've got it's it's a filler polyfiller um, or anything that you use to fill holes or screw holes um, or nail head holes or whatever um, in walls that's been that have been plastered or dry lined the dry walled so anything that you use to fill holes if you're decorating will work just as well so decorating materials but you know. So what I've done is I've put some of the texture paste down onto my craft mat and I've just got a spatula and I'm just going to drag that texture down across the page. But it doesn't matter if you get any bits and pieces, I've got a few hairs in this, I don't know where they've come from, <laughs> which is ridiculous considering it was a clean spatula that means there must be hair in my texture paste somehow so what I'm doing is I'm just dragging the texture paste across the page and you can create more texture just by dabbing and dragging I'm just concentrating heavier in one area and leaving a little bit of space at this side. And you just keep on going until you're kind of happy with the amount of texture that you've put down on your page. Now bearing in mind that there's water or moisture in your texture paste which means that, that water will transfer into the paper so it will start to buckle a little bit. Okay that will do for me so let me just lift that up and I'll see if I can try and show it there you go catch it on the camera like so and then I'm going to dry that off or leave it to dry have a tidy up and then when that's dry I'll be back. I'm also going to clean off my spatula to make sure that, that texture paste doesn't dry on there because if it does it's ruined and it goes in the bin. So whenever you use texture or structure paste whether it's on a spatula or whether it's using a stencil you need to clean them straight away. Okay leave that to dry, clean this up, get that cleaned and then I'll be right back. My texture paste as you can see just there as the lights catching it is now dry so we're ready to start building up our kind of grungy steampunky background. Now I do have to issue a slight disclaimer before I start adding my colours. Um, I appreciate that verdigris only forms on copper. So copper oxide only happens on copper. So to add verdigris with rust in a real world situation doesn't happen unless you've got iron and, and copper together. This is a stylized rendition, an artistic rendition of grunge and rust together. So we're adding verdigris just as an artistic highlight. So I appreciate the physics of the matter, I appreciate the chemistry and that you don't get copper oxide on ordinary metal, <laughs> it only forms on copper, but like I said this is just artistic so please don't leave me comments telling me that you don't get verdigris on ordinary metal. Right okay so now that disclaimer is done because I will get them 
or I have had them in the past. People pointing out that you don't get verdigris. Right, okay, so I'm going to use the Americana Deco Arts. Um, and I've just realised that I cleaned all my brushes the other day and haven't brought them back, so <laughs> I've left them in, in the bathroom, so I'll just have to go and get them. Be right back. And yes, you did hear right, I have cleaned my brushes. I know, it only happens once a year. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to need all these, but I will just have a few. Um, I'll need the splatter brush, the fan brush. Um, short bristled ones for this, I think, work a lot better, or work better than any others. So I'll put the rest away. Um, I have got some water here, but I've also got a spritz bottle as well. So, first things first, I'm going to put down a base coat of um, grey paint. So this is the, shake it up first, because I know exactly what's going to happen. I'm just going to end up squirting binder all over the my craft mat here. So just give it a quick shake just to make sure it's not separated. There we go, that's better. So I'll just take one of the brushes, pick up the paint, and then I'm just going to start adding grey paint just over the background. Okay, so before it dries, I'm just going to add a little bit of water, just spritz it over, which is going to just break the paint up a little bit. I suppose I could just add it to the mat, couldn't I? Either either. Either either is a good way. I'm going to need some more. There we go. As with a lot of these kind of artistic endeavours, there's a lot of drying time involved. Because we use a lot of water. He says not finishing his sentences again. Okay, so this piece of paper will end up being rather wrinkly and crinkly, but that's okay. All right, so that's our first coat of the grey paint. Now you can already see how that texture has started to form. So where we haven't put the paint down, it's gone flat. Oh, sorry, the, the structure paste, it's gone flat. Um, where there's a little bit, you've got a bit of um, texture in there, but where the where the structure paste or the texture paste is, it's soaked in and is going lighter, which is fine. That's not a problem. Okay, so get that dried off, get this cleaned up, and then we'll be back to add the next coat. Okay, and I've just worn a hole through my mat. That's with cleaning. Can you believe it? actually worn a hole clear through the mat so I'm going to need to get a new one but hey ho we'll just persevere for today right so there is the beginnings of some nice kind of texture so what we're going to start to do is we're going to start to build up the color layers now so we've got our base color of that gray so I'm going to start off with some darker colors so this is dark chocolate but you can use whatever darker colours you've got. Now, the reason I'm doing darker colours is I'll just quickly clean off the brush. But I'm going to leave it a little bit wet. So I'm going to pick up some wet with it. And then I'm going to just start adding it in random areas. Now, this is the trick. It's starting to add your colour all over. If you've got colour spritzers, obviously it's a different technique altogether and that's a different video altogether. This is just showing you how to create them with paint. So, and there are, like I said, probably about 101 different ways to create a grungy, rusty effect. 
using different mediums. So each medium, there's a different technique. Okay, so first of all, and I'm probably not going to use a lot of, um, I'm not going to like dry every single time be between coats. You'll see me probably just leave a little bit wet and just add colours down. So that one was honey brown. So again, it's a brown colour. Get some water because it does help with the colours to blend and form between. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there and then bring in another colour. So this is terracotta. I've still got water on my brush. So we'll just introduce that terracotta colour all over. And I'm trying just to keep my brush strokes in straight lines. I'm not going diagonally, I'm either going vertically or horizontally. It's just one of those things that it just seems to look better. Just pick up that lighter colour again. Okay, so now, sorry, I'll finish that sentence. It looks better if you've got straight lines rather than diagonals. So I'll get that dry. Okay, so the page is still a bit warm. I'm just going to manoeuvre the page around so you can see the light catching that texture in each of those corners. And look at that. Look at the grunge and texture in that corner there. So, but we're also getting texture from the brush strokes. So where you've got the different blocks of colour, the different tones, the different values of the colour, you're also building up texture as well. You don't necessarily need the texture paste. You can just lay a paint to get a very very similar effect by also creating some runs which we will be doing in a little while. So we're starting to build up that colour as you can see, that, that effect. It's already starting to look like a rusty kind of background. So but I want to bring in some lighter colours now. Well I say lighter colours, I want to bring in the orange and the ochre or some oranges and yellows. So I'll just give the ochre a quick shake and then just drop a blob down like that. Drop a blob on the mat. Okay, and a little bit of that. Not too much because it is kind of a fluorescing colour that one. That is the bright orange from Decoart American. It's almost a, a fluorescent one, not quite a neon. Okay, so I've got my brush. I've got a little bit of water on the brush, but I can add with the spritzer. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of colour. I've got orange on one side and yellow on the other. And then I'm going to start just to drag that down the page, like so. Remember, I've got a little bit of colour, a little bit of paint, uh, water on the brush. And it's okay to pick up two lots of colour on the same brush. And then I'm going to turn it 90 degrees, just pick up a little bit more water. I'm going to do it again. This way it's also going to catch on that rust, on that texture. And collect a little bit in those ridges and nooks and crannies in the texture paste. 
There we go. Give that a try. Okay, so that's pretty much dry now, but you would think that with a rust texture um, being kind of orangey colour that I'd be adding more orange to it, but I'm not. Because we've actually got those dark colours in the background, we've got a little bit of that yellow, um, we've got terracotta in there as well, but that little just highlight of orange in there I think is enough. We don't actually need any more. So now I'm going to add a little bit of red. Just give it a bit of a shake up. This is True Red, again from Americana. And I'm not going to be adding a huge amount of this, just a small amount. And I'm going to use a different brush. I'm going to be using just a smaller bristle brush. So and I'll pick up a little bit like so and then I'm going to just almost do a little bit of dry brushing where the texture is. It's almost, um, it's almost like adding a little bit of bruising, <laughs> just adding that red in to that texture. don't need a huge amount. Now this particular red is a little bit translucent so it will pick up a little bit of that colour from what's underneath. Like I said just doing a little bit of dry brushing just adds a little bit of what I call the, I like to think of as like bruising to the texture. And again, we're only adding just a little. Put a little bit more in that corner. So just subtle. Now again, I'm going to leave a little bit of detail in this corner here. And I'm leaving some of that grey showing through. Not detail, I'm leaving that corner with not a lot in it because I'm going to add something to that later. Because Although I'm showing you how to create a kind of rusty background, I'm also going to finish the page off as an art journal page. Okay, so that's dry brush. It's almost a dry brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a wet wipe. And I'm just going to remove the bits of excess just with that wet wipe first and then I'm going to drop it in the water and then we'll get rid of that paint because we're not going to add any more. And of course, remembering if you're adding water to paint, all you're going to create is more paint. <laughs> so sometimes it's better to actually mop up paint with dry rather than wet. Okay, so clear that brush. All right, so that's now dry again, uh, clean again. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add that verdigris kind of colour. So I'm going to take that sea aqua and we're going to do a similar sort of thing. So again, we're going to use a dry brush, or as dry as we can get it. There we go. And start to have a little bit of fun, add in our stylized rust. So I'm going to add it a little bit too much on that brush there. So I'm going to start the movement before I even touch the page so that I hit the ground running. Can you see? I'm not going directly onto the page with a full brush, I'm actually moving before it even touches the page. I 
and I can press it as hard or as light as I want to get a deeper colour. And see how we're getting that real kind of grungy colour coming out. Let's take some of that right up into that orange at the top. Look at that. Eh? Eh? And then I'm just going to go back over just in some areas. With a bit more paint. And then just lighten that up. And then we can turn it just a little bit and then maybe do a few strokes that way. Just pick up a little bit of detail from that texture paste. Just dry brushing. You see there, look, those lines appeared there. And then of course we're not going to stop there. That'll be enough for this for now. I'm going to put that straight back into some water, get that cleared up. There we go. Get some dry tissue. This won't take long to dry, but once it is, I'll be right back. Okay, so that pretty much is the grunge, rusty, steampunky kind of texture that I was aiming or trying to show. Now that could have either gone very, very well or very, very badly, but I think it's gone quite well today. So a nice, steampunky, grungy, rusty kind of texture page um, just by using some paint and a little bit of texture paste. So now what I want to do is just add a little bit more interest into the page. So yes, I've got the fan brush, I've got some white paint and I've got a bit of water. So we're just going to add a few Letters. That'll do. That's the white. And because this is a grungy page, not only are we going to add white splatters, but we're also going to come back in again with that dark chocolate brown. And we're going to add some brown splatters too. I think adding black would have been a bit too much because there's no other blacks on the page. So you don't need a lot and it's quite subtle, but just enough. And if you wanted to, you could maybe just encourage a little bit of drippage and running if you wanted to add that to it. But you don't have to use every technique on every page. We've said this before. You can stop and limit what you're doing and save your other technique for another day. <laughs> okay, let's get this dried off.
Okay, so that's now all dry and I've just nipped into the other room and bunged it underneath my scanner so I've now taken a copy of this so that I've got it forevermore to use if I ever need another grungy painty background and I don't have time to create one. The scanners are useful sometimes. Okay so what I'm going to do now then, now that that's done, so if you're only interested in building and creating grungy backgrounds you can turn off now, but if you want to see me finish this off into a full-blown art journal page then stick with me. So what I've done is I've created some um, clusters and some layers that I'm going to add to this page. Um, so I've got this fantastic character called Mr Remington um, who was created by Ian a couple of years ago um, for another project altogether and um, that didn't actually end up going anywhere so I'm using it today. So I've just layered him on top of a, a paper cluster um, that I'm going to cut out and we're going to add to this art journal page. I've got one of two different slogans and things to put on the art journal page if I choose. I've got madcap and nonsensical which I can add to it or I've got just another crazy day at the office um, because there's a typewriter involved in there look. So <clears throat> um, we've got a few bits and pieces to use and cluster on there but there's a second page on this kit where I've scanned that original motherboard that I was talking to you about this morning, or masterboard that I was showing you this morning. So I've scanned that and I've added that into the back of the page and there's also a copy of Mr Remington just there at the bottom if you fancy fussy cutting him out. So that is available um, to download and purchase on my website right now. There'll be a clickable link in the description area below. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm not going to use this obviously because I've already got my background. But if you don't want to create one you can use this for your background if you want. So I'm just going to be using this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away and cut these pieces out. I think I'm going to go with this one, just another crazy day at the office. So I'm going to cut this one out, those two out, actually those three out, and that out, and then I'll be back and we'll start putting this together. So I've cut all of my pieces out now, so I have gone for that just another crazy day at the office. Um, I've cut my clusters out, obviously they're all a bit kind of raggy edged which is fine but I've got an edge scruffer here which I can just add a little bit more authenticity to just by going around the edges a little bit just to scruff it up just so it doesn't necessarily look too much like a digi image so we'll just add a bit of texture to it that way course if you haven't got one of these you can just use the blades of a pair of scissors um, just be very careful just hold the blades and just drag along the edges and you get a pretty much similar effect if you can see so you don't need to dash out and buy one of those edge scruffers if you've got a pair of scissors you've already got one it's just a bit safer if you buy one of those because the blade's enclosed um, and I certainly wouldn't recommend kids doing it that way. Um, so, so we'll scruff along those, I'm going to scruff along this library card as well but I'm only going to do three sides because I'm going to do something a little bit different with this one. So I'll scruff along those three sides and then I've got some vintage photo distressing so I'm just going to grunge up the edges of that, grunge up the edges of this all the way around like so. So that's going to sit about there. I want one of these. I think that one which is a it's kind of a dictionary page just happens to say is the word journey on this one as well as a few other J words. Jolly boat and judge but journey was the one it was scanned for so 
again, let's just add some of that vintage photo around the edge. A bit grungy. So we've got a little bit of a cluster going on there. So let's just sweep some of that mess out of there. So the reason I wanted to do um, something a little bit different with this top one was I actually wanted to create a little bit more of a 3D effect. So I'm just going to grab my cutting mat and I'm sure I've got a scalpel. There we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, what did I do with it? There it is. I'm going to create a slot in the paper where that can now slide underneath to make it look as though it is actually a 3D cluster. People think when they buy images of clusters and stuff they can't cut into them. Well, of course you can. <laughs> so we've got that, that and that now. And then I've got this, which I need a pencil. So we're going to just make a mark about there. And then I'm going to create a bit of a whimsical hat. I'll just cut down there. So that creates that one. And then we can cut in out there. Maybe easier actually to turn it over that way. I can see the lines better. There we are. So we've now created one of those fabulous art journaling tropey hats. A meme hat. So out of almost nothing we've kind of created this. Maybe just make that a little bit longer because it's a bit tight. There we go. That's better. And if I wanted to, I could just bring in that distressing just along the edge there, just to give it a little bit more depth and dimension. That better. Okay, so we need to start gluing stuff down. Gluing stuff. What we got? Elmer's? That'll do. So this is the purple stuff, but because it's been in the light, it's um, it started to fade. So let me just add a little bit of glue on there. I apologise if I disappeared into a bit of stream of consciousness while I was doing this. That's what happens sometimes. There we go, we've got some glue there, and then we'll add some just to the back of that. And then slot that in. Got some glue there, glue there. It's going to hold that in place. And then we can add a little bit of glue just onto that. Come on. Onto that cluster there. That's brilliant. Okay, so now we can glue the whole bally lot down. Excuse the noise.
There we go. Okay, so now then, not liking that glue much, so let's use some other glue. So this is some new grab and glow grab and go glue from indigo blue so we'll sit that on there like so just give that up it does dry transparent so don't worry about it coming out the top because we've used paint it's not going to move anything off the surface. There we go. <laughs> like it. And then we can just go around add a little bit of grunge to our quotes. I deliberately left the black line because I thought it might just give it a little bit of a border, a bit of a pop. You don't have to if you don't like it. Just add a little bit of glue just on there. I think that might be. We've got a cloth. All right, so the thing with this is it's got one of those little twisty. Uh, opening so you can adjust the flow of the glue to a little or a lot. I don't know whether you can see that. I always either just tend to have it wide open without changing it to learn to to do just the a little bit hole. There we go. That's better. Right. So now, I can add my quote. And make that part of the overall, let's just add a little bit of glue under there. That should hold that. I like it. I like it. Suitably madcap and nonsensical. Which is what the other quote was that's on the sheet. So like I said, if you wanted to create that, if you want to create this along with me, then you can pop across to my website and just purchase that and then come back and do it with me. But you don't have to do the background if you don't want to. You can use the background that's on there if you want. And you can also colour him in at a later date which I might do but there you go so I hope you've enjoyed watching me create that background and then the little bonus for that art journal page afterwards so I hope you've enjoyed watching that if you have please remember to give it a thumbs up share the video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video that's all for me for now um, I think Ian's back next week I'm not sure <laughs> Only he knows. Um, but if not, then I'll try and come up with something more suitably madcap and nonsensical for next week's Steampunk Tuesday. It's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.
I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.